I'm Jason Lee. Thanks again for inviting me to Oktoberfest. It's an honor to be a part of this celebration again. I'm going to talk today about Jedmatch. It's been a while since I talked about, about Jedmatch. The last time I talked about Jedmatch, Jedmatch was still fa fairly obscure, but uh, Jedmatch is now a household name because of its involvement in a number of very high profile genetic genealogy cases. So um, I think a lot of people have heard about Jedmatch now, whereas when I talked about Jedmatch a couple of years ago, about two and a half years ago, it was a very obscure little company. So it's interesting to think about what's happened in that time. But uh, today I'm going to be focused on the basics of GEDmatch, GEDmatch for beginners. I want to get people interested and I want to get people started because GEDmatch offers a lot and I think more people should be involved. I'll uh, give my usual full disclosure statement which basically says I don't have any connections with any of these companies except as a customer, except as a user. So I come to you with an independent perspective and I don't profit from the sale of test kits or memberships in any way. You can find me online, particularly on Facebook. You'll often find me in the Ancestry DNA matching group on Facebook. Um, of course, we talk about Ancestry DNA match results there, but as resourceful genealogists, uh, we also use a number of other resources, including GEDmatch. There are 101 members in the Ancestry DNA matching group. So um, if you're a beginner, it's a good place to go. There are a lot of people who want to help beginners there. I've been in genetic genealogy for eight years, and um, I've really enjoyed this and look forward to talking to you about GEDmatch today. So as I mentioned, uh, GEDmatch is pretty famous now. Um, hopefully that's uh, gotten you a little bit curious about it if you haven't already joined GEDmatch. GEDmatch has an excellent reputation, has, has won some important awards. I'm going to go ahead and assume that some of you have already downloaded raw data from Ancestor DNA or one of the other DNA testing companies and you've uploaded it to GEDmatch. If you haven't, you can find instructions about downloading the raw data from Ancestor DNA or from one of the other DNA testing companies at those websites. They'll, they'll give you instructions. Um, you can find uh, better instructions uh, if you Google. Um, I think uh, instructions can be a little cloudy at the websites where you do your DNA testing. Um, some of the uh, genealogists who've uh, provided their own instructions have done a better job. Um, if you've downloaded the raw DNA data and you're ready to upload but you haven't uh, figured that out, um, GEDmatch does pro provide pretty good instructions and there's some videos that can be helpful. So I would um, ask you to search those out. So an outline of this presentation basically breaks down into two basic uh, sections. First of all, I'm going to talk about the why of GEDmatch, details on what GEDmatch can do. Um, I don't expect all of that to sink in if you've never heard about GEDmatch before, if you haven't heard much. Um, I just want to mention a lot of things because there are a lot of really useful tools and I want to uh, bring out um, a lot of those details. Different people will have different goals and, and, and these tools will um, be useful for some and other tools will be useful for other people. Bottom line is I want to do a quick review of, of what you can do on GEDmatch and let you decide for yourself what sounds interesting. And then after going from the why, we'll go into the how. Um, and I'll, I'll give a little bit of information about that just to get you, um, get you started and um, try to make the, um, the, um, the beginning of the process relatively easy. So again, we'll start with why, we'll go to how. I think the why will illuminate the how to some extent. So GEDmatch can do a lot. GEDmatch is a big suite, a big collection of tools, and um, it's really impossible to get into all of that in one relatively short presentation. I'll give a quick overview. So uh, first of all, I think this is of interest to almost anybody who's, do, do, uh, who's doing DNA testing for any reason other than just ethnicity. 
if you have um, if you have any other interests other than simply getting that pie chart, um, GEDmatch can do something for you. Um, first and foremost, GEDmatch can give you more matches. So if you've tested only at Ancestry DNA, if you've tested only at Family Tree DNA, you're going to get matches that you've never seen before at GEDmatch. So GEDmatch can give you new matches. Uh, GEDmatch can give you new tools. GEDmatch has the best collection of tools anywhere. Um, they're very powerful, they're very useful, they're very interesting. Um, and the tools available at GEDmatch match or exceed the tools that are available anywhere else. GEDmatch can help you uh, with verification. Uh, sometimes you'll get match results at Family Tree DNA or match results at Ancestry DNA that don't quite make sense. Uh, you can go to GEDmatch for a second opinion and see if things become more clear. Um, you can pinpoint shared ancestry in ways that are impossible at the other DNA testing companies because of the detail, details that are available, and that can lead to verification. Um, one thing that I think is underappreciated is that when you get the better details and you get the finer, more granular information from GEDmatch, you can unexpected, unexpectedly um, tear down some theories that you thought were pretty good. And then that can lead to uh, new theories and uh, you end up making a lot of good progress. Uh, furthermore, I'd say that uh, because of the matching segment information that GEDmatch provides and the detail um, and the additional tools, you can uh, do a better job of documenting, documenting your DNA research. You can do a better job of uh, generating a, a body of evidence that will be useful to other researchers and, and useful to future generations of researchers. Um, I also note that um, even if you don't do a lot with your GEDmatch results at GEDmatch, you can contribute to progress in genetic genealogy just by being there, just by being part of the system. Um, other people who may uh, take it further can make contributions to research on your family lines and you may end up benefiting from that indirectly or other people who are researching your family lines can uh, benefit directly. Um, I would encourage you to join GEDmatch just to help other people. Um, so if you show up on my mat, uh, match list, I'll certainly be working on that and I'll go as far as I can with it, particularly if you show up relatively high, at least in the 20 to 40 range. But even if you're in a lower range, uh, you'll find if you reach out to people, if you reach out to me, um, and say, hey, we share 10 centimorgans. I'll do the best I can to find out what that means, and uh, we might learn something interesting. So that kind of leads us to the, to the uh, cousin bait idea. Um, you get on GEDmatch. There are people out there who may take it further than you do. It's cousin bait. You'll, you'll make new connections that way. So again, I'll say it over and over again. Uh, matching segment details are one of the, the most important um, pieces of information that you'll get by going to GEDmatch, particularly if you've tested a database that doesn't provide matching segment details, and I'm mainly thinking about Ancestry, because Ancestry is really the only company that uh, provides no matching segment details at all, um, and, and it is really at a minimum at this point. Hopefully they'll improve that over time, but at this point, um, if you're one of the people, one of the millions of people who've tested at Ancestry and at Ancestry only, um, you'll get some matching segment details at GEDmatch that really take things to the next level. So uh, this kind of reiterates the previous slides. You get more matches, you expand, expand the search for relatives, uh, you can confirm prior research, tear down old hypotheses that need to be torn down, you can uh, break through brick walls. There's really a lot. Um, I've come to think of GEDmatch as a Y bridge, um, and I found this interesting picture that illustrates that concept. So GEDmatch is really bringing groups of people together, uh, bringing um, GEDmatch, uh, excuse me, bringing uh, 23andMe users over here with um, Family Tree DNA users or 23andMe users over here and MyHeritage users over here. Um, all of these people are separated from each other in these various databases, a GED match is the Y bridge that brings everybody together. So it's very helpful, and I really like to see a lot of people joining GED match to take advantage of that. Um, even if you've tested at all of the DNA testing companies, so if you've tested at Ancestry DNA, you've tested at 23andMe, you've tested at MyHeritage, 
Uh, you've tested at Family Tree DNA. You tested at Living DNA. GEDmatch has the best tools and can push you forward in ways that you never would have even imagined. I learned a lot about genetic genealogy just by being on GEDmatch and seeing these tools and trying them out and learning about the underlying concepts that these tools rely on. So um, if you have a deeper interest in uh, DNA testing and if you want to go beyond the pie chart and you want to go beyond the match lists and try to learn about genetic genealogy and try to um, make the most of what you've uh, put out there, uh, GEDmatch is, is a great place to be. So I mentioned the second opinion concept. Sometimes you'll get unexpected results at Ancestry DNA or Family Tree DNA or one of the others, or uh, someone will fail to show up on your match list because of thresholds that seem to be increasing every day. Um, and excluding more and more of our potential matches just because of arbitrary lines that are being uh, uh, drawn, redrawn um, on a regular basis and uh, becoming more and more strict and excluding more and more of our distant matches that are key to our uh, brick wall research. Um, if, if you're uh, frustrated with that and, and you want to um, get a second opinion at GEDmatch and find people who've been excluded by the other si systems, uh, GEDmatch is really important. You'll have tools that allow you to compare three to ten people or even more people with multi-kit tool that's available to people who join tier one. Ancestry doesn't have tools like this. Some of the other uh, companies have tools that are similar but not as powerful. Uh, take a look at that at GEDmatch for yourself. Um, GEDmatch allows you to see fully identical regions and half identical regions. Um, this is also available at 23andMe, not available at uh, uh, Ancestry. So um, if you want to uh, find an interesting and easy way to distinguish full siblings from half siblings, for example, you want to take a look at that at GEDmatch. It's a really nice feature. Visual phasing is a more advanced technique. Um, it helps you do some really amazing things. Uh, GEDmatch provides the sort of information that you need to do that. I won't get into the details. It is an advanced concept. Uh, DNA Painter uh, is not accessible to people who use Ancestry DNA only. Um, the other companies provide some information that will allow you to fully uh, take advantage of all of the tools that are at DNA Painter. DNA Painter is a very popular tool. A lot of it's free. Um, it's really exciting. Um, I'd like everybody to be using tools such as those that are provided by DNA Painter but uh, you can't take advantage of those tools if you don't have chromosome browser information or matching segment details. So if you've tested at Ancestry DNA, please use GEDmatch so that this world of opportunities is opened up to you. So DNA Painter, I'll mention it again. Uh, you can check that out on your own. Um, it's intermediate to advanced. Um, so it's not for everyone, but it is nice. GEDmatch also uh, provides X chromosome information. Um, that's another thing that's not available at Ancestry, not available in MyHeritage. Um, if you want to look into half-sibling relationships, understand those better. If you want to research distant ancestry, X chromosome information can be helpful in both of those endeavors. Um, there's a lot to learn about XDNA if you've never um, learned about uh, the details of DNA matching um, algorithms and DNA uh, matching uh, tools. Uh, so it's not the first thing to look at when you first get into uh, genetic genealogy, but it is helpful. GEDmatch, in addition to all the other benefits, um, helps us to get email addresses for our matches. Um, that's easy to access at GEDmatch, uh, essentially unavailable at the other companies unless uh, your matches have had the foresight to um, put that on their profile pages and make that accessible to you. Um, GEDmatch requires an email address, and so everybody on Jet GEDmatch has an email address, and that can make it a lot easier to contact people and to get around the clunky and unreliable email systems or message systems that um, the other companies make available on their websites. Um, I think on average, the average GEDmatch user is more active and more interested and more likely to cooperate. Um, it can be hard to get people involved wherever you are, 
but I think uh, GenMatch is uh, a little easier in terms of uh, generating some collaboration. And ultimately, as I mentioned, even if you don't do much on GEDmatch yourself, you're helping other people um, when you upload to GEDmatch by uh, giving them another tool to work with. Another piece of the puzzle is available when you get on there. And um, you might find that you benefit indirectly when um, they're out there working on your family lines and adding to things and breaking through brick walls and um, uploading that information and making it available. As I mentioned earlier, uh, GEDmatch can serve as cousin bait. Um, I've had some long uh, relationships with other researchers as a result of uh, reaching out through GEDmatch to people who are working hard on their genealogy. So again, um, you're going to get complete and accurate matching segment details for matches at Ancestry DNA and other DNA testing companies when you go to GEDmatch. And I emphasize Ancestry DNA here over and over again because Ancestry DNA, although it's the biggest database um, with 23andMe um, uh, close behind, um, but Ancestry DNA um, withholds the matching segment details that are so important in verifying and documenting relationships uh, in ways that cannot be done without matching segment details. So, um, over and over, I'll emphasize that if you're at Ancestry DNA and you're only on Ancestry DNA, uh, GEDmatch is very important. So um, I've mentioned matching segment details over and over and over again. What are matching segment details? Matching segment details take us beyond the total amount of DNA shared, which is important, to provide more context and more granularity and more detail. And that helps us to pinpoint share, shared ancestry in ways that can't be done with simply the total amount. So there's a total amount of DNA that you share with your match. That doesn't tell the whole story. Um, matching segment details can be provided just as numbers, but also in visual form. That's where chromosome browsers come in. Um, and again, I, if you're new to all of this, I don't expect you to remember all of these details. I'm just throwing these terms out here. Um, if, you already, if you're already familiar with them, uh, then um, this makes more sense. If you're not familiar with these terms, um, I'm laying the groundwork so that as you dig deeper, um, you're um, working with um, some information that you've heard about from a presentation like this, and hopefully it will help you move forward. So uh, to emphasize the importance of matching segment details, this is a quote uh, from Jennifer Zink. Our equivalent of original source, excuse me, our equivalent of original sources is the chromosome browser. A lot of good and useful genealogical information is lost in the mix if shared segments are ignored. Uh, Linda Jonas said, DNA results without a chromosome browser is like a genealogy without documentation. When you look at someone's family tree and there's no documentation to prove it, all you have is some hints of possible relationships. There's an old saying that genealogy without documentation is mythology. The same applies to your DNA. So I strongly agree with that. I think we're starting to see some people kind of back away from this, and I think that's probably because uh, people are kind of giving up on uh, getting matching segment details from Ancestry DNA, um, and they're getting discouraged, and they're uh, trying to find ways to get around that. Um, I would say we shouldn't be discouraged. We can get access to that information at GEDmatch and at the other DNA testing companies. Uh, we really need to be sure that we don't lose sight of the power of matching segment details, not only to verify what we think we know, but also to um, knock down and disprove uh, theories that seem to be good, but then fall apart when we uh, take a cl close look at those matching segment details. And I have a really good example here that I want to share with you is coming up. Uh, before I get to that, again, matching segment details um, provide a lot of interesting information, and um, they do so in a way that's universal and portable. So um, chromosome browsers provide visual information. The underlying information, the matching segment details, can be shared, uh, can be compared. Uh, it's portable. Um, you can compare uh, matching segment details that you obtain from GEDmatch with matching segment details at 23andMe, or MyHeritage, or FamilyTreeDNA, or anybody else. Um, so that's something that, that I think 
uh, doesn't get enough emphasis, and I want to emphasize that. Um, matching segment uh, information um, can be written down and uh, compared with matching segment details anywhere. Matching segment details help us judge the quality of a match. Uh, maybe the best example of this concept is the fact that um, when we get matching segment details, we can see the length of the longest shared segment. I won't talk about that at length, but uh, MyHeritage uh, talks about this. They say, among the different sized se shared segments, the length of the largest segment you share with another person can help you identify the likelihood that you're actually related. The longer the largest segment is, the higher the chances that you're related. Um, for people who are from um, tangled up family groups or from endogamous groups, this is very important. Uh, different companies use different terms for this. A Jed, Jed, a Jed match uh, simply uses the word largest. My heritage says largest segment. Family tree DNA says longest block. Ancestry DNA um, is new to this. Um, just a few weeks ago, they started uh, telling us about the largest segment. Um, it was pretty easy to find initially. There were so many questions about it. Um, after it first came out, they've kind of tucked it away and they've hidden it, but it's still there. Um, Ancestry DNA uses the term longest segment. Um, I'm glad that's finally there. Um, hopefully they'll keep it there. Um, they've hidden it, but it's still there. Hopefully it'll stay. Um, the largest segment is um, helpful in sorting through things when uh, families are tangled up. There's a lot of intermarriage. There's endogamy. So um, that's one thing that um, is very helpful and very simple, to, uh, fairly simple to apply uh, when you're starting off in genetic genealogy. So I think um, the possibly uh, easiest way to think about these concepts is in terms of mapping. So when you look at the total amount of DNA that you share with a match, you're really talking about genetic distance. So that's a term that you might see from time to time in the literature, genetic distance. That's what the total amount of shared DNA in centimorgans is referring to. Uh, a greater genetic distance um, correlates with a stronger biological relationship. So first cousins will share more DNA. There'll be a greater distance, genetic distance, um, in comparison with third cousins who share less DNA um, with a lower centimorgan value and a smaller genetic distance. Uh, matching segment details, however, I've emphasized matching segment details a lot in this presentation. Matching segment details are also referred to as genetic coordinates. And I really like that term because it really clearly helps us to understand that matching segment details um, really help us know where we are on the map when we're looking at our family tree. And um, We'll talk about that briefly. Um, without matching segment details, we can jump to false conclusions even when our family trees are accurate. And I think this is one of the most important points that I've ever made in any of my presentations. Um, if we try to do a DNA research without looking at those matching segment details, it's very easy to draw uh, a jump to false conclusions. Even if my family tree and your family tree are perfectly accurate. Um, so you and I might share some DNA and we might be looking at our family trees and making comparisons to figure out where that shared DNA came from. If we try to draw a conclusion about where that DNA came from without looking at matching segment details and we're just looking at total amount of shared DNA without matching details, it's, it's very easy to jump to false conclusions, and, and I'll give a good example of that um, here in a moment. So, again, I want to say that one of the most important things that we get out of matching segment details is to, to disprove hypotheses, disprove theories. Um, I've got some old terminology here, but there are some links um, in this uh, slide. Um, if you can get access to the PDF file that I've created for this presentation, um, you can... Um, come to this slide and follow these links. So again, I've been talking about this good example. Um, this is really held up well. Um, it's withstood the, the test of time. 
um, it's, it's a really great example that helps us to see why we want matching segment details. Um, and I can illustrate the importance of matching segment details with this case in a way that's very accessible to beginners. So I'll talk about this. Uh, Danny um, was one of the first matches that I ever reached out to. Um, he was on my first page of matches at 23andMe, so that's one of the reasons I reached out to him. Um, I started my DNA testing journey with 23andMe, and he was one of the first people I noticed. I also noticed that uh, he was on GEDmatch, so that made him all the more interesting. We shared about 51 cinemorgans, um, according to uh, GEDmatch. And so I contacted him, and we compared notes, and we found no obvious connection. He did tell me that his mom would be testing later. The results weren't back. Um, so we didn't find common ground and we moved on. However, um, I was working on my family tree. I was really building on uh, the family tree that I started when I was a child. There were some errors that I needed to correct. I went through the process of um, making some corrections and found some new ancestors and uh, had to remove some people. And when I went through that process fairly early on, um, the automated systems at Ancestry um, found these changes, made some comparisons, and told me that Danny and I shared some Ancestry through our relationship with Wilson Williams and Emily Elizabeth Deloach. So um, very convenient. Um, Ancestry uh, said, hey, you and Danny share DNA. In addition to sharing DNA, we found that you and Danny share some ancestors. Uh, you made some changes to your tree, and now we see something that wasn't there before. You have some common ancestors. So that was nice. Um, this um, set of shared ancestors um, come to um, me through my mother. Uh, it's a direct maternal line all the way up to Emily Elizabeth Deloach for me. And it's a maternal connection for Danny as well, uh, several generations of women um, going up to Emily Elizabeth Deloach. So maternal connections for both of us. Um, and I want you to remember, if you can, for me, this goes through Ruth Dean, my second great-grandmother, Ruth Dean. This is my second great-grandmother, Ruth Dean. Uh, direct maternal connections all the way up to Emily Elizabeth Deloach for me maternal for Danny as well, and that will be important here in a second. We also had a DNA circle, uh, so that's even more interesting, and um, DNA circles are gone, but through lines have kind of taken their place, and to this day, Danny and I both have a through lines connection to Emily Elizabeth Deloach. Uh, Danny shows up for me in my Emily Elizabeth Deloach and Wilson Williams through lines. So um, a lot of people would of course be tempted to say, hey, we verified this relationship and we verified it with DNA. This is a DNA verified cousin. Um, that's what people would, would be tempted to say. And that's what I would be tempted to say, particularly early on. Um, this is an image that a lot of people have uploaded to their trees. Apparently uh, people are uploading this when they feel that they have uh, sufficient evidence to say that the person in their family tree has been verified through DNA evidence. So uh, Danny and I share DNA, but uh, my question would be, did this DNA really come down to us from the ancestors featured in these tools at Ancestry? Did this DNA really come down to us through Emily Elizabeth Deloach and Wilson Williams? So I'll uh, look for more evidence. Now, in a lot of cases, uh, you won't have more evidence to sort through, but I was lucky enough to find some more evidence. And in this case, I found a match at 23andMe who um, shared DNA, of course, with me and my family, and also with Ruth Dean's niece. So very interesting, very nice to have um, Ruth Dean's niece out there in these systems. Nice to see that Victoria shares DNA with my family as well as with Ruth Dean's niece. So of course I have made contact with Victoria and I got a prompt reply and that prompt reply came from Danny. So I didn't know it, it was a true surprise. Uh, Victoria is Danny's mom 
and Danny is managing Victoria's account. And so here we go. Uh, we feel even more confident that we're working with something really solid here. Uh, but then the question comes up, is this DNA verification? Is all of this evidence that we've been talking about so far good enough to say, yes, we share DNA, and it did in fact come from Emily Elizabeth Deloge and or Wilson Williams? Well, I wait, I, again, that's, that's, with so much evidence, it becomes very tempting to jump to a conclusion or draw a conclusion, but I did take it a step further, and because uh, Danny, uh, excuse me, because Danny's mom, and because Danny both are in systems where I can make matching segment comparisons, I'm able to take a deeper look. And it turns out that Danny shares DNA with me and my family on chromosome five, on chromosome eight, and on chromosome 17. Danny's mom, however, shares DNA with my family on chromosome three and chromosome nine. Um, if you're new to uh, matching segment information, this might not be immediately obvious, but you might start to think, well, this doesn't quite make sense. We're, we're seeing some differences here. If you, if you have some experience with genetic genealogy, the, the problem here is, is, is probably very obvious. If the DNA that Danny shares with me and my family came from his mom, then the chromosomes on which we find shared DNA should be the same for Danny and for his mom. So we know that if Danny inherited his DNA, the DNA that he shares with my family from his mom, uh, Danny's mom should share D DNA should share uh, DNA with my family on chromosome 5, chromosome 8, and chromosome 17, but uh, she does not. There's a complete mismatch here. doesn't line up at all, and that alerts us to the fact that um, Danny inherited this DNA from his father. Uh, everything is completely mismatched, so we know that Danny's mom has nothing to do with the DNA that Danny shares with my family. That So uh, that takes us another step further in and, and, and tells us that um, although the ancestral relationship that we first identified for Danny and my family is maternal from his mother, the DNA doesn't back that up. The DNA is paternal. So the DNA that I share with Danny does not verify this maternal relationship. It, it verifies something else. It doesn't verify uh, the relationship that goes back to Wilson Williams and Emily Elizabeth Deloge. So um, we basically torn down a hypothesis that it seemed very strong, and, and many people would have uh, included, uh, concluded emphatically that uh, the DNA that Danny shares with my family does verify this ancestral relationship going back to Wilson Williams and Emily Elizabeth Deloge. But that conclusion is incorrect, clearly incorrect. And uh, matching segment comparison helped us to see that in a way that would have been impossible without the matching segment information. So again, a complete mismatch, um, tore apart a hypothesis. Now, that doesn't mean that Danny and I aren't related through Wilson, Willi Wilson Williams and Emily Elizabeth Deloach. It just means that this DNA evidence is telling us something else. It's not telling us anything about the maternal relationship. It's telling us about another relationship. And in fact, after some more research, we were able to find the paternal relationship from which this DNA actually came. And the paternal relationship goes back to James Thurmond and Nancy Thurmond. Uh, Danny and I are both descendants of this couple, and we have verified through very strong evidence multiple DNA comparisons with several other de descendants of James Thurmond, Thurmond and Nancy Thurmond that um, we are connected by DNA to this couple um, is very clear through all of the match results and through uh, matching segment details that um, our DNA connection points to this couple. So I'm really proud of that uh, connection. Um, number one, we, we uh, made a new discovery because we paid close attention to the DNA and we tore down a, an incorrect hypothesis by looking at those details and refusing to uh, jump to conclusions prematurely. And this is another point, uh, a 
again, this is uh, one that I think is one of the most important points that I've ever made in any of my presentations. I, I, I want people to understand that verifying the DNA evidence is as important as verifying paper trail evidence. We see a lot of discussions online about uh, genetic genealogy and over and over and over and over people say, you've got to verify the paper trail. You can't take it for granted. You can't assume that this other person's family tree is correct. You want to make sure your own tree is correct. And that is very important. That's a point that deserves to be emphasized, emphasized over and over and over and over. But I think that what isn't emphasized, emphasized enough is the fact that verifying the DNA evidence and scrutinizing that and um, really hesitating to jump to conclusions about the DNA evidence is as important as the paper trail if we want our DNA uh, connections to mean anything at all if we want to uh, be sure that we're using it to the fullest extent and um, we're, we're doing as much with it as possible, we need to uh, scrutinize it very carefully. So um, along those lines, I would say that DNA evidence, paper trail evidence need to agree. Uh, when, when they don't agree, um, it's telling us that we might be on the wrong path and um, if we look carefully, we can get back on the right path. If we're already on the right path, these matching segment details can help us get to the correct conclusions more quick, quickly. Those, those are the lessons that I've gleaned from a lot of matching segment comparisons. Um, so matching segment details and chromosome browsers are tied together. I've written um, a blog post about that that goes into some more detail. If you want to follow the link on this slide, you can go to it. It's entitled why do you need a chromosome browser? Go ahead and uh, check that out if you want to learn more. Um, so um, the previous slide was about uh, the, the awards that Jed Matches uh, won um, in recognition of their contribution. I'll go ahead and say that um, we can talk briefly about using Jed Match. And again, I'll assume that you've um, already uh, downloaded a copy of your raw data from one of the DNA testing companies and you've uploaded that copy to GEDmatch. Um, if you haven't, you can uh, learn about that at the DNA testing websites and at GEDmatch. So once you get started, um, I would say the first thing to do at GEDmatch is to go ahead and um, find the one-to-many link. That is the first tool that's the most important tool. I think it's the best tool for beginners and it provides a lot of information. It's really kind of information overload. So that one of the reasons I'm giving this presentation is to kind of cut through that information overload to focus in on the most important bits of information that are most accessible to beginners. So again, once you sign up for GEDmatch and you um, upload the DNA file, that is needed to get started at GEDmatch, um, I want you to go to the main page and look for the link that's entitled One to Many. Um, so One to Many um, is on the main page in the section called DNA Applications. So find that link if you're just getting started and click on that link and then put your GEDmatch kit number in this box here near the top of the page. So find this box, put your GEDmatch kit number in it. Um, your GEDmatch kit number was given to you when you first signed up after uploading your DNA file. And it's always accessible on the main page. So if you forgot to write it down or you didn't uh, find it in your email or, or you lost it somehow, you can always find it when you sign into GEDmatch, it's on the main page. You can uh, copy that kit number or enter it in and um, then you click the green search button on the same page and then you're taken to a big list of matches and a lot of other information. So when you get to that page, I want to emphasize that your closest relatives are at the top of the page. You don't have to go searching for the best matches. They're at the top already. So the best matches, uh, strongest matches are at the top and you go down the list and you get to more and more distant matches as you go down the list. So uh, you don't have to figure out how to find the best matches that are already at the top. I'll say again, the one-to-many list can be a little bit intimidating. Um, I wasn't sure what to do with all of that, that information when I first signed up. I'm not a genetic genealogist by training. I have some, I have some background education in DNA that was helpful, 
but it certainly didn't prepare me for GEDmatch because GEDmatch is specifically for genetic genealogy. And there's a whole body of information that people need to learn in genetic genealogy that's unique to genetic genealogy. So uh, don't expect to understand it all when you first get involved. Um, just know that there's some information there that's fairly accessible and easy to understand and there's other information that you can ignore in the beginning. So focus on the most important items first. Don't dis get discouraged. I would say the most important items are the names and email addresses. Uh, that's uh, familiar information, easy to understand, easy to get started with. Uh, this is what the first page looks like. So again, I admit this is intimidating. I hear that um, uh, GEDmatch is going to have a big makeover here very soon. So this all is likely to change in the near future. Hopefully all this information will still be there somewhere. I think it is very helpful information, but it is a bit of uh, information overload for beginners. But I'm going to help you uh, sift through the information to get to the most important things first. So again, don't try to learn everything all at once. Take the baby steps. Don't get bogged down. Don't try to understand XDNA and haplogroups on day one. You don't have to understand all of that to get started. Take it slowly, Start. Uh, keep swimming. Uh, don't put this off. Uh, the sooner you get in there, the sooner you'll start getting emails from people who are in the system, who are interested in, 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 in uh, talking to a, a new match and finding out how you're connected. So just go ahead and get in there. You don't have to understand anything. You certainly don't have to understand everything just to get started. So again, uh, names and emails, very accessible information. If you learn nothing else about uh, GEDmatch, you can get in there, you can go to the one to many list, you can start looking at names, you can start emailing these people and saying, hey, looks like you're a good match because you're at the top of my list. Let's work together, let's figure out what's going on. And they might understand a lot about GEDmatch and help you get going. So uh, the name, the column of information with names is here. I've, I've, I've uh, colored it yellow to emphasize it. So it's here towards the left side of the page, yellow, and emails are right next to that. Um, and uh, here you can see those email addresses emphasized in blue. So again, this really is all you need to know to get started. Um, additional features, however, um, if you feel like um, Going a little further, you can start looking at total centimorgans, you can be looking at GED match numbers, uh, the kit numbers, and you can be looking at the links to family trees. So assuming that you've um, looked at names and email addresses and you want to dig a little deeper, we'll talk about total centimorgans. So total centimorgans, this is how much DNA you share, total amount of shared DNA. Uh, more centimorgans, stronger relationship. More centimorgans, stronger relationship. That's really all you need to know in the beginning. Um, highest values are at the top of the chart, as I mentioned. Best matches at the top, so you don't have to go looking for your best matches. Um, if you want to look at that number and uh, understand uh, the uh, shared centimorgan uh, question a little better, you, you go to this column, and it's off towards the right side of the page. And again, you don't have to dig into this in the beginning if you don't want to. If you feel overwhelmed already, start stop with the names and the email addresses and forget about everything else. But um, if you want to dig a little deeper, you can get total centimorgan values in this column that are uh, colored orange. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If uh, you want a pretty um, simple and uh, straightforward way to um, look up centimorgan values, you can go to this uh, so-called green chart. It, it's very helpful. Um, otherwise, you can also look for information about shared centimorgan values at um, Johnny Pearl's uh, DNA Painter website. Um, you can get information for free about uh, centimorgan values there. Um, and again, I'm kind of going through this uh, information fairly quickly. I don't expect uh, new people to process all of this immediately. I'm just laying this out there, it's something that you can think about later um, as you go further and deeper. Hopefully you'll remember these terms at least vaguely and maybe it will help you as you move forward in the future. Um, so I just want to emphasize that I don't necessarily expect all of this to be immediately uh, understood, but um, all of this is helpful depending on how deep you are. So um, if you hear these terms and you feel like you need further uh, reinforcement, um, you can go online and, and find more information 
play this video later um, and, and repeat some of the information. You can go to um, Facebook groups such as mine or others. There are a lot of people out there who are, are, who are really eager to help. Um, so moving on, um, if you want to go a little further with the one-to-many um, page, you can look for the column um, that provides the family trees. So that column is entitled Jed slash Wikitree. And if you look in this column, you can find links to family trees uploaded or linked by the people who um, are on this list. And that can be an easy way to begin finding what you have in common with your matches. Then finally, um, the kit number is another item that's fairly easy to understand and process and access in the one-to-many uh, tool. Um, the kit number is basically an ID number. Uh, you can use the kit number correspondence. You can say, hey, um, I'm interested in this match. The kit number is whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, there are a lot of people in GEDmatch who manage multiple kits, so it can be helpful to say, hey, I'm interested in kit number whatever, whatever, or whatever, because um, if you just email them without mentioning the kit number, they might have to email, email you back and say, well, I, I manage a lot of kits, so who, who are we talking about here? Uh, the kit number can help as, as in correspondence and, and for reference, and the kit number is useful for a lot of the other GEDmatch tools. So if you go beyond one-to-many and you're using um, other GEDmatch tools, uh, the, the, the kit numbers for your matches um, can be very helpful, helpful or essential in, in using those tools. So uh, the kit number is on the far left. I've uh, colored that in green to, to show that. And again, that's, I think, enough to get started, more than enough to get started, really. Um, I won't go into everything else on this page because um, I think it's too much for a beginner. It's uh, more than most people are going to want to bite off in the beginning. Um, and again, um, if you do nothing more than um, upload, you're off to a good start. And if you do nothing more than uh, check out the names and email addresses and start emailing some of these people, you're off to a very good start. So uh, with that, um, I'll conclude by saying that uh, the key elements of the one-to-many tool are the names, the email addresses, uh, the total Cinemorgan values, the trees, and the jet match kit numbers. And uh, item number one and item number two are the most important items. You can go a long way just with those two items. So thanks again for watching. Um, if you have questions, you can email me at jxleefam, jxleefam at gmail.com. And uh, you can seek me out and other people who uh, have an interest in all of this in my Facebook group, Ancestry DNA Matching. Thank you.